Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to University Call of Duty, brought to you by SD. And it is playoff time, and we have got a wonderful semi finals coming up for you on Twitch. You see, which is of course this channel. We have got a match between Aston and Chichester. My name is Nisister. I'm joined by Trix, and we are here to break for you. So, Trix, how are you feeling going into this? Man, I'm uh, I'm excited to be back. Uh, I I did a bit of collegiate Call of Duty uh, commentary uh, over in Europe um, a while ago, and and I'm glad to be back here and making my return. And obviously, alongside such a handsome fella as yourself, um, I, I'm I'm stoked. And and we got Chichester, a returning uh, champion from last season, uh, going up against uh, this Aston Ape side that looks quite revived as. Um, they in the past hadn't sported the best finishes yeah i want to say thank you so much for that kind comment you too my friend but yes of course going into this series as you say we've got two fantastically good teams starting off with chichester a very very strong hardpoint team i would say aston off the stats that we have slightly better but however ratley who is from chichester averaging at 108.25 seconds of time per map absolutely incredible but yeah on the other side on the hardpoint aston dominant in the hardpoint averaging 85.5 kills as a team per map so for these maps one and four of course we go the distance should be a fantastic battle that's it from the two teams yeah it's uh i'm see i'm familiar with the eu side of things when it comes to collegiate uh, a little bit less than the north american side of things but uh um as i'm sporting my collegiate stuff uh with the canadian school that i work with um and uh but I, i'm really interested to see how the meta is a bit different to start off the gate with uh, this new Call of Duty from region to region because we already see a bit of a difference in styles when you look at the challengers approach from uh, from the players there um, that are also competing this weekend. Um, but I'm, I'm I'm just I'm excited. Uh, we got two really strong teams that I feel like both would equally deserve a, a grand finals appearance. Absolutely. Yes, we're heading into the game now. They're both fighting for their place in the upper bracket final. But uh, yeah, these two teams, absolutely fantastic teams. I think we might have had a lobby crash here. So I'm just going to go back into a few of the more stats we got because I've got a few more written down. So why don't we cover them? Uh, Chichester, lowest average KD on the team in S&D is a 1.2. S&D wants guys. Ratley, who of course I mentioned before, houses a 5.7 KD in S&D. That is absolutely unbelievable, Rick. Yeah, you you honestly have to tip quite a lot of the uh, um, S and D success that that team has found from that from Ratley's performances, and um, you know I, I wouldn't I would I, I don't like pointing out like a one player like kind of changing the entire dynamic of a team in any mode or being like sort of like uh, the rock, but um, you, you kind of have to give a bit of bit of that um, rock kind of. Uh, uh, typicalness over to Raddy for his uh, his statistics. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, on the other side, we don't have any recorded stats. S and D all control, so we don't really have much to go off of those games at the end of the series. However, uh, yeah, one player. if anything makes it more interesting, right, cool. because we don't really know how to go. And at the hard point, I mean, these two teams are going to be well matched. So if they're incredibly much in the S and D and the control as well, then we should have a fantastically good series. But seeing as we have the time, let's go over the map. Quickly, we're starting off on the map one with a hotel hardpoint, going into an empty S and D hotel control fortress hardpoint, and then if we have to go the distance, we're going to be ending it at a hotel. That was a fantastic in this series. But uh, tricks out of all the maps in the game so far, what's been your favourite? Um, I mean, uh, <laughs> it's going to kind of sound weird, but I, I'm I'm a fan of hydro. Uh, Honestly, a lot of people too. don't like it, but uh, I'm a fan of just the dynamic of being able to 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 be relevant in a dynamic uh map element that is water um i also think uh outside of that one i think uh hotel is warming up on me a little bit and uh i think it could potentially be one of my faves by the end of the game and here we go speaking of hotel we're going straight into the first hard point Straight away, we're getting straight into it. Look at that. A, London, a, bit, a bit of love for the London Royal Ravens with this game coming out, but straight away into the point. Go, Aston. Oh, no, it's actually uh, it's actually Chichester into the point first. Apologies. But up to C. Got a, bit, got a few M4s already out the gate. Chichester getting the early points, but Aston coming up, getting in the break. Kills 
Off the start, slowly going into the hands of Chichester, but for now, they're trying to make the break forward. And as you can see, this first hard point, very mixy in the middle of the map. There's a lot of lanes to look onto it. Not going to be many kills going on to this one, Hatrix. Yeah, oh, a lot of kills going on to this one. Not much time, sorry, that's what I mean. I, yeah, and, and well, for the people at home that are, uh, you know, have any color, uh, color um, issues, uh, we will be looking to sort that out, uh, just so things look a little bit easier in the minimap. But uh, for now, just, you know, that the number is five to eight, that's going to be uh, the Chichester side, and then numbers one to four are going to be on the uh, Ashton side. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the color color was doing me a bit dirty at the start of the game as well, but it's all good. We're going into it again. You can see the hold is coming in from Chichester, Chichester sorry, and that, that strong hard point presence that they had in the stats is showing out here early. Get the spawns for this side as well. The nades are going to be coming in, trying to break in through the front. Araston, you stuns towards the back. Hector's going to pick up a kill onto Wayno. Another one tries to come through, and Ratley having the defense here. They're holding for now, Chichester. But Aston are trying to push forward. The kills come through. And finally, they break in. But again, it's another kill. It's mixy as it possibly can be. And it's sort of looking like a Vanguard game at the start of this. Yeah, and, and you're also seeing a really brutally one-sided uh, hill. Once you get locked into those street spawns, it's really hard to retake them, especially from the front. Um, and even trying to retake it from spa, it tends to be pretty problematic. But uh, as the game continues on uh, throughout the season, we'll, we should start to see more solutions come to the table and come to the surfaces. Right now, a nice solution coming through is Ratley, like every single hill so far, coming in for the side of Chichester, breaking in and getting everything that they want. I mean, him and Wade are immediately off the start doing so well. 37 and 29 points for time at the moment and they've also both got seven kills 14 kills between them seven and two and now eight and four on the other side as well doing so well for their squad at the moment absolutely stopping any type of push that aston are trying to push on and now for the moment they have about a seven point lead trick not to mention ratley's inside of kitchen hill with a uh, unimaginable five streak after taking gunfight on gunfight with an ar the m4 into some of these uh vaznevs we're seeing on the other side of things I, I this I want to segue into that kind of a conversation piece as well. Uh, while the score is such in such favor of Chichester, what are your thoughts around this map playing out with four ARs? Uh, do you like that? Do you think it's uh, you know it's entertaining? I mean, I think the the less weapon variation you have on the map, the less entertaining I think it's going to be on the whole. And it is nice to see some Vaznevs on map as Wayno picks up a double another one he is now sitting at 13 and 3 on this map by the way with 39 seconds of time as well he's doing absolutely fantastically well for this game so far but yes I mean if we can see some more variation in the through the season maybe with an plan or you know maybe something that comes in but for the moment it is a little bit annoying to see so many m4s on the map but I think Aston are just annoyed to see any of the Chichester players on the map at the moment absolutely bodied and 130 point lead here three of chichester's players who are housing over 10 kills with window six and three he is putting an absolute clinic on for the moment not so good on the other side with ray four and 13 frenzy at four and 12 as well they are getting absolute bodied right? i mean th this is what happens when you can't gun against a team and on top of that you can't out, ro out rotate a team we've seen it time and time again already Within the first day of pro play, teams like Boston Breach able to still keep competitive when being outslayed just off of ro early rotation alone. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you can see Aston trying to get themselves into this hard point as well, but they're just not able, or they are able to break in now. They are able to break in. Frenzy's able to make it for the first time almost since, for about three hard points, it seems that they've been able to get any time whatsoever. Wayno trying to push through the middle, but he's dropped by Hector. That's a good bit of defense there. A nice gunfight win. Tower trying to come through the back, and finally, finally, tricks. Aston are getting a bit of hold on a hard point. Yeah, and 10 seconds left until we rotate to the sixth map, uh, sixth hill on a rotation of hard points. I can't believe I'm saying that in 2022, but it's going to be up here, top patio, and this is super wide open. You're looking at likely one to two, three, maybe three different spots people like to hold this hill to contest. So it's going to be interesting to see how people look to take those players off and and or if we see some ingenuity in in locations in which we want to see players hold 
Absolutely, and of course the tacticals and the nades are so important on this hill to try and break into it. That's a lovely kill there from Wayno, just baiting in 21 and 6 he is right now on a 4 streak again. He's doing absolutely fantastically well at the start of this map, but there Frenzy gets a nice double to drop him, and this could be a bit of free real estate for them to move into, but for the moment Chichester once again dominating the time. Ratley from the back picks up another, Frenzy with the double as well, and he's going to get back in. Bit of time maybe here for Aston potentially to get back into this game, but no way no comes in and shuts it down. And Chichester, they're just stopping every single attack that Aston are having forward. They just have no space to breathe here. Yeah, you're looking at uh, some problematic uh, points on both sides. You got Hector and Ray who just need to start stepping up for the side of Aston. While over on the side of uh, Chichester, they're, they're not perfect. Uh, where you you see Tao going 8 and 14 with only 26 seconds of hill time. Usually, if you start seeing a player not doing too well in the slaying department, uh, you start to send them onto the hill to soak time up more and allow the hot-handed players to uh, play off. And uh, that's not even being done, really. <laughs> Wayno and Ratley, uh, even Natons, just trying to do it all for this team of Chichester 3v4. And it's really working out well. Yeah, absolutely. But I think the main man for Chichester has got to be Wayne right now. 25 and 8. He's also got a minute 10 hard point time. Only 15 seconds needed now for Chichester to get the win. And I mean, at this point, it's just got to be keeping your guns warm. For yeah, Nathan's going to be in the holding that hill. Frenzy's going to hop on top. He's going to play this couch heady, lies down next to it, finds a nice tricky kill onto tail. And then you got Ratley already on that early rotation. This should surely lock things in for Chichester, which number eight and number seven, going to soak up that time. Number two in the back could play spoiler, should get sniffed out. But no, it's Tal who goes for the chow, and it's not going to look good as Chichester is going to be able to solidify up this hill and solidify up this map with Ratley's two-piece to finish. And an absolutely dominant performance from Chichester on this first map. We thought they were going to be the better hardpoint team. We did not think they were going to be this dominant. Absolutely incredible performance, especially from Wayno. Not sure if he, he must have pushed past 30 kills at the end of that game. Not 100% certain. He was absolutely fantastic. Look at this. The stats, absolutely unbelievable here from Chichester. Not quite pushing past 30. Wayno there, 27 and 10. Ratley, 23 and 10. Knighton's as well. It's been absolutely fantastic performance on that first map. Yeah, we're um we're a lot of praise is definitely deserved um over on the side of Chichester. I, I do want to point out I feel like Frenzy did a, a a great job putting up the numbers he was able to put up against Chichester while working on a, a side that uh, I think we both clearly could see was um almost like two players more active and two players not active. Uh so it's going to be interesting to see if Frenzy can keep up the uh the composure and the the uh and the presence going into the next two maps of this series and or more if we see the extension as um, we got Search and Destroy on the cards up next. What are your thoughts on on uh, on Search and Destroy in this game so far? Well, I mean, Search and Destroy, I think, has been... The fact that Snipers are still in the game, I think, is definitely helping its cause. But um, definitely, you know, not the traditional Search and Destroy that we know, but it's still been pretty entertaining to watch. Yeah, I think as well, especially for this match, we don't really have that on cards for Aston, so it's going to be interesting to see if they can bounce back into Search and Destroy, which they're definitely going to need that absolute demo they had in the first game. But we're yet, to, it's, we're yet to see if that's going to happen anytime soon, but I mean, what a dominant, dominant performance it was in the point from Chichester, especially from Wayne. Absolutely. 27 kills. And last time I checked, he had a minute and 10 half points. I mean, that was, that was the middle of the ridiculous. It was absolutely but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna send it to a short break, and when we come back with the S and D, can Aston get back into the game, or will we see another dominant performance? Well, we're about to see you soon.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to University College. We are here in the upper bracket semi-finals in the playoffs. And you've just seen a dominant first map from Chichester in the high point. We are going into the second game, which is, of course, Embassy Search and Destroy. Can Aston bounce back tricks? We're about to find out. Yeah, and they're going to start off with offense as well. They're going to rush this over to the B site, which is the preferred site for most teams on offense. Um, I, I personally want to see how teams like to break this B site play and strategy um, as it's actually a really slow play over to it from this Ashton side. You know, I feel like Ray is going to be looking for that first blood, which unfortunately they weren't able to get as Hector was the one who dropped. So it, it just the slower you try to play this site now with less numbers, it, it's only going to be more painful for your team. Able to get the bomb down through friends. Something for them. At least. Of course, they are a man down at the moment. It will be three. Rightly, you can see up towards this, I think it's P4 on this map area. Right, Davar is able to pick up two. That means that they now have the life advantage. They've gone from a 4v3 to a 3v2. Bring up the top. Titans is going to go through the... Frenzy picks up another one. They've gone from a 4v3 to a 3v1. Titans, he has a job on his hands. He's not able to do it. And Aston will take the first round in the destroy. And that is something they definitely needed. Well, right there, excellent example of uh, real men getting paid, uh, where we, we do see the number one in uh, Endeavor uh, get the first, uh, get the two kills to put the team up in lives after being down in that three to four deficit. But once that bomb does get planted, teams tend to be able to secure the round. I think there's a sh extremely high um, percentage of round wins uh, for offense once, B like post B plant. Uh, from what I was looking at from a challenger's perspective, at least. It's going to be interesting to see if it translates over to pro play and if it, things keep up here in this um, in this collegiate level as the B plant should come through for Tal. As Daver's just a bit too slow here. And a sniper is going to be out on the feed and it's going to be able to find one kill from Wayno. Yeah, I snipe that. It's also an interesting point I want to make. We also saw a smoke on the map here, which I don't think we have seen so far in the Call of Duty League unless there was one in the match. But for the moment, Wayno is going to be the one with the sniper. He's going to pick up another water shot from Wayno. That's two on the round for him. It's a 3v1. It's all on to Hector. And surely this round should be Chichester. Yeah, and, and maybe comes out and gets spotted by Wayno as uh, he's going to be stuck there. Even pops Deddy, which. Or did he pop Deddy? Or was that maybe a little bit of a. I think uh, he's still got it there. You talking about. I think Hector's still got it upon moment but no no chance for him to win the round here it's going to be the snipes from wayno that decide it for chichester they're going to bring it to 1-1 and a bit of momentum that they have from that last game dropped but then picked up once again and we'll fight up gotta give props where props is due so far as uh we see both these teams win their opening rounds of offense as uh, this map tends to be, whoever drops an offense first uh, goes on to usually lose the uh, the map. So it's just going to be about securing these offensive rounds. And Frenzy with the sniper rifle now to try to match Wayno. Not sure if the energy will be the same as Ratley returns fire with an opening first blood here on Hector. There was a 2-2 split on the defense here from Chichester. And even though there's a lot of presence over towards B, they haven't shifted over. And that's good because Daver is going over towards... They say bomb site now. Getting a bit of a look at the map spread that Chichester have at the bottom left of your mini map. It's fantastic. They have every lane covered. Wayno picking up another snipe. That's his third in the game so far. And another one there onto Ray. The quick scope. Say goodbye to your head, Ray. As Wayno on an absolute tear so far in the first two games. And he's getting that on into this one. Tal with the wow, final right kill there. as well. It's the finishing, it's the finishing hat right there. He got themselves their uh they got themselves a defensive round win which will, in my opinion, be the decider. But uh, for now, obviously, we still got quite a bit of search and destroy to play out. But um, that's like a massive, massive shoe to put on. Yeah, and I think, I think it was just a map spread on the defense. So there, they covered every single angle. And even though there was a lot of presence over towards B, they didn't fully commit. And that's good because they were able to cut off Dava and get the round win for Chichester. Aston again, desperate here to get back into this game as a, to do it quickly. But you can see from the defense, even now, look at look how different Aston's defense is. All four players committing over towards B. The smoke 
is well used and Rutley sit in a good position. Dava's going to be moving through the middle as well. But for the moment, no picks at the start of this round. I mean, speaking about picks, that's another thing I wanted to commend the, the side of Chichester is uh, on both of those rounds where they were on defense, they were able to come away with that first blood, which tried to make it a lot more um, manageable. At least, at least you saw it be a lot more manageable within the last one. And uh, right now, both teams still in that standstill. Daver, the one that's making a difference for Ashton in the, the, the KD department. While over on the side of Chichester, you're looking at that donut, uh, that goose egg that's still being held on to by, uh, by Nathan. So it's going to be interesting to see if he can get rid of that as the A play is the variable thrown out by Chichester. The plant could come through, but four and three could spoil that party. Well, I mean, when you got the sniper away, you know, maybe you don't need to get any kills. He is brought down here after getting a, yet another snipe from the top rope. Brings him down again. That's Knighton's, I think, picking up his first kill of the search and destroy. It is, and the bomb is going to go down from Ratley. It's a 1v2. If Frenzy right, might be able to pick him. Gets one. Away with his life. Tries to play around the corner. He's around the corner. Is he going to predict it? He almost centers up correctly, but he's not quite able to pick it up. And Chichester just about get away with that one there. I mean, we, we've always talked about, you know, especially in the last COD, Celium is, is the hardest kill in the league. And, well, and you're going to pull it a little Celium trick of the book, lying, lying on the belly like a snake. Ratley's going to come out on top. And that's, uh, that's something that also needs to be, like, I feel like worked on by a lot more players is just having this, having the, 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 the sixth sense to spot players lying down or to, ex to predict people to be lying down a lot more frequently in this game, especially with the movement system being a lot less uh, um, evasive. I'm sure across the year we will definitely see that as that is something that is very good in this game. But you can see good start here in the round for Aston, Hector and Ray picking up two. There's one traded out, so that means it's going to be a 3-2 for the rest of the round. Everything slows down once again. The bomb is in the hands of the Frenzy. Going into the top area, and he's going to drop. I think, oh, who is it? He dropped in the in the feed. I can't see it in the feed. I think it was uh, it was Ratley, I think it was. Yeah. Gone down, and Ray now has the bomb again. He's going to get it over to the safe bomb site. And a smart play to get the bomb down here. But with Wayno with the stuff in his hand, you never know what is possible here. And he's able to see one, but he doesn't hit the shot. I think if they were going to win the round, he'd really have to connect with that. Yeah, but maybe he can find himself uh, one or two just off in this alleyway. Uh, so far, not so good. Um, but this, it, it is a great round so far for Ashton, though. You you got to provide credit there towards them for what they've been able to accomplish here. And, and snapping this round win streak that Chichester had built for themselves and and for Ashton as well, this is their opportunity to try to get something going for them to get back into this search and destroy before it, it kind of gets away from them too much. Well, yeah, I mean, they let them up one slip away from them. They really cannot afford for that to happen. This game is too it is so hard to come from, especially with the way that control works on this game because the defense is so, so difficult on some of these maps. But it goes back over towards Chichester on the offense. You can see the map spread. It's going to be a bit more of a 3-1 spread by Aston. Not fully committing to the B-bomb site this time. Could be a flank on here, potentially, with Ray. And from the top, it's going to see down from the bottom. Bomb. It's a quick plant. And Ray, the root man, gets paid. Gets two from the back, and he's able to get away with his life as well. What a fantastic play from him. Frenzy picks up another one as well. And all of a sudden, it's a 1v4 for Wayno. Wayno going to be able to get the nice shots to connect there onto the second from Hecta. And that's going to be Ray and Frenzy. Last two alive for the side of Ashton. Can Wayno clean them up? He can't as Ray will be able to get that diffuse in. Calculate whatever math equation he has on that app he has in front of him. And Ray will be able to get it through. Ashton getting that defense to answer the defensive round win earlier by Chichester is only going to make things... That, that much smoother and even closer to sending us to that round 11 that I believe most commentators want to see in certain destroys. Well, we may not have had any stats for Aston in s and but it's been a lot, lot closer in this game so far than it has been in the first game. Can they continue this? They're back onto the offense again. You can see Wayno once again putting up fantastic numbers. Seven and four at the start of the round. He's put that sniper away. I think he should pull it back out right now. He was absolutely beating people in those first few rounds, but in the side it's Dava who's got the sniper out looking over towards that A bomb might be 
pick up someone over towards top area. Right, he's able to pick up one on towards the bomb site. And he's able to get Hector as well, somehow. Able to get away, but Raid, no, drops him. For the moment, it's going to be a 3v2. Wait, no one. Up towards, towards that top window, but Raid's out of there. He's skedaddled. He's gone. He's left. Crumbs in his path. He's gone back over towards that bomb site now. Towards that A bomb. Now that. And it's an impossible situation for them here because Knightons and Wayno are both watching the bomb. Ray trying to come around the side and he's able to pick up Knightons. Wayno trade at the top and it's a it's a 1v2 now. All on Daver. Uh, Daver, I don't really favor his position right now. Bottom, uh, bottom PD going up top. He's going to have to find a pick with this sniper rifle then also pick up that bomb and get it down within the next 20 seconds. It's not looking too good. Tal biding his time in the back alley. Wayno up top just going to be playing that audio for when that bomb is picked up as Daver breaks some glass, comes on in, and gets absolutely rammed to the ground as Chichester will get themselves another round on the board. And it is a defensive round win as well. Once again, something to really highlight on this map is uh, not really happening too often. But in this one, it's so far been three Defensive rounds one, which is uh, very uncommon from what I've seen. Yeah, it's a very unusual thing this game so far to see defensive wins. But as I said, it's the universe duty league and anything can happen. Once again, to the offense of Chichester, they have the advantage to give them, or the opportunity, sorry, to put themselves within one of the series at one. So, or sorry, no, making it a 2-0 lead, sorry, after that absolutely dominating win first half point and they start off well with Wayno picking up first blood as he, does, as he has done so many times so clearly the star player for this team already on 10 kills only in the 8th round of this search and destroy Frenzy trying to get a trade out in the middle but he's not able to get well. Wayno pushes forward and he's able to get another his 11th kill before they finally bring him down they need a whole squadron of them to bring him but Ray from the back over towards the right going through Daver Ray sort of have a pinch from either. Right, he's going to be pushing through, and for the moment, all goes a little quiet on Embassy. Nitons and Tal. Speaking of quiet, they've been a bit quiet so far in the kills department for the for the Rangers. As Chichester's Nitons going to get on there, just as I mentioned his name. Not a caster curse that some caster love, and we see a two v one situation. Um, the round has turned into with Ray. Trying to make some magic happen. Popping Deddy. Gonna find one below. And the other one far away. The AR perfectly equipped for it. Can he, he the find perfect, the kill? He had the perfect chance to get the snap there. Not quite able to get the last shots in. But he is still able to get this clutch. Goes around the side. And he's just gonna wait his time out. But that's a lovely shot. He's brought down. And in the end, it wasn't quite enough. So close to the 1v2. But in the end, it was Ratley who brought him down with for off his line called his bluff puts his team within one of putting themselves two up in this series and putting them on match point going into the control yeah and what an impactful player to also get that kill somebody that's been feeling themselves from map one going into map two ratley eight and five a very strong person there and, and ray also a strong presence mostly in this search and destroy i think the the player in the Hard point that we highlighted was Frenzy. Um, but Hector, somebody that's been underwhelming in this certain destroy here for the side of Ashton. It's going to have to step things up. He's died a lot in first blood situations. Ray dropping early in trade for Tal. It's got to look good for Chichester. It's got to feel good for Chichester. Now, will it produce anything, though? Well, you can see that patient play there. There was a lot of you know, trigger discipline showed over towards that A bomb site, but Wayno is brought down, and that's always a good first step to win yourself around Chichester. It's all it's now one v two. Hector with the bomb, they're over towards A, and I'm sure. Oh, they've all turned towards him. They know exactly where he is. He brings down one, but he's not able to take the other one with him. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are getting closer and closer to that round eleven. Aston, they hold their nerve. They have the ice, and they send us at least. I mean, they, they might not have the ice yet, but Hector, man, he stepped it up big in that round. I said going into it, I said he wasn't doing too well. He was looking lackluster, but 
going into it three and seven, and now coming out of that round with a triple kill, practically holding still st holding down that A site all on his own against what three players and onslaught of three coming from Chichester. What a what a stand! What a stand that he had. Frenzy up top, gonna play AC. Listening for a few players isn't going to be able to give up enough info to help his team out with that first blood as Ratley will find it onto Ray. And it's going to be up to Ashton's other players to try to take down this round and, and, and push on for that round 11. You can see the setup here from Chichester is so good. You can see that number five, Wayno in the back is just cutting off that lane. Even if there was a push, you can see so far around the back and it's all down to Hector now. It's a 1v4. And it seems like the ice has run out. The ice has melted for Aston. He's going to have to pull something incredible here. I just don't think it's possible. 30 seconds left on the bomb. He has to kill all four players and get the defuse in. He may as well jump out here. Get the stats up. But he's not even able to do that. Chichester, once again. It was not as easy as it was in the first map. up, But it was fun from them. And in the end, once again, they pull through. 6-4 win on this search and destroy holding the lanes fantastically with a great setup and there was no way that Hector could have got all the kills under few with any left it was a fantastic performance final round yeah so far it's been uh it's been Chichester across the board we got ourselves a map number three up next it could be the deciding one uh, and ending one for this series sending Chichester to their second championship in, in a in match in a row um in back-to-back -back seasons but it, it, if there is going to be any sort of signs of life to still be seen it's got to be coming into this control from the side of aston the apes uh they've got to come in here with a plan they got to be composed they got to try to put these last two maps behind them and uh and come in and really start off with a, a successful round one i would say for this control Absolutely, you know, I, I think especially in uh, in control, it's, it's very difficult to come into. But with, whether they will come into it or whether they will come into it, we will shortly find. You go into a quick commercial break, but when you come back, potentially we could see three zero uh, in here in the upper bracket semi-finals and seeing Chichester through to the upper bracket final. But that's what we'll see you soon. Well, we're going to be hopping straight into the control here. As you can see, we're first round. You can see Aston have already secured that A point. Getting over to B as well. Getting over to that first tick. But Trix, this is your first time seeing control for the between these two teams. What are your, what are your thoughts going into it? I mean, right now it's uh, it's going a lot better for Aston than what I thought. Um, I, I did think it would be a lot closer uh, 
from Chichester, at least the, the, it would have taken longer for that A site to have been taken. Uh, but we are seeing things sort of fall uh, in order of the usual operation from what I've witnessed. Um, offense is very favored in this control. Um, and the A site is taken earlier and, and most often than the not. And now it's left up to this B. And with a 10 to 9 life situation that's developed, it's still looking quite doable for Chichester. Oh, absolutely. And I think uh, if they can hold the defense here, they're doing very, very well. Because as you can see, Aston only need that one more tick now. And this is exactly what they needed to get back into this game and back into this series. Potentially a lovely kill from the back from Frenzy. They're pushing forward and they're getting potentially what they need. Wayno, though, the absolute rock for Chichester throughout this series is holding the line from the back. But surely you would think, especially with the live counters, Chichester, they only need... They only need one more death on their side, but now it's equaled. And actually, they've actually turned it around. Aston are down to their last lives, and so are Chichester as well. It's going to start to become team deathmatch, and even search and destroy here. As Aston now, only two lives left. It's only one. And after they started the round so, so well, they are falling at their knees here. At least they'll have got two ticks, but there we go. Chichester shut it down. They get it on lives, but even still, five ticks on the map so far. Aston, which is not... Absolutely horrendous the start to the game so far. It's not horrendous, but it's still very uh, very problematic because this is, like I said before, it's a very offensive-sided map. Um, teams that, when you when you load in for an offense, you should be winning your offenses very, uh, very convincingly. Um, and it, it usually comes down to that round five, and whoever does get an offense takes it. But with this massive defensive round win from Chichester, I... I, I've got to think that Ashton, if they didn't feel the pressure going into this map uh, already, it being the one that could see them uh, eliminated from this playoffs run, it, it's extremely, extremely pressuring now. Well, yeah, especially after the, the start that Chichester have had to this round as well. They're immediately getting it. He's put the first kill on the board for his team there. After Chichester have already secured an entire tick on this a point and the kills are just continue to come in the kill feed is flooded with blue absolutely fantastic start to them once again and aston after they had a really explosive start in this first round it's really been shut down immediately Knights trying to come through and back it up you can see that the frenzy from the defense of aston is coming in they're trying to flood towards the point but there's no point getting there as hector he's going to be a little too late he is able to pick one up though onto towel before he gets away with his life but again Chichester, all they need now is this second point, and that's a two-round advantage in this game that would give them a sweep at an absolutely dominant, you must say, 3-0 in this series. Surely, surely. Wayno holding the power position, this desk with absolute finesse. Going to find himself the two, hopping around, popping up and down like a snake. Daver finally does take him down, it seems. So we will start to see Ashton stabilize, and if they want to stabilize with the most success possible, they need to get somebody over to that bedroom so that they can start threatening the the two-sided approach to this hill and pinch. But without there being any clearance and anybody really going for a wrap that's going to be timely, we should see Chichester be able to lock down this B in just a few seconds. There you go. It's the round, and we're one round away from the map as well. This is... Been absolutely dominant performance all series long from Chichester. I mean, two of their players have over 17 kills in this control so far. And we've had two rounds. Two rounds of control, 17 kills. That is absolutely ridiculous. For more than one player, absolutely insane. Look at this. It's just an absolute dominant performance so far. Aston just, so far, they, they've just been stunned. The first round they started so, so well. But in the end, they just weren't able to get the final two. Lost on, on lives in the second. They were absolutely dominant, and it seems they're going to be going for a B push here first. Yeah, it's uh, they're, they're they're trying something new out. They're they're right now. It's just all experimental for them. I think they they gotta use this opportunity of playing a really strong collegiate team um, going into the the start of this COD. Uh, there's more to still play collegiately going into the next semester, so. They've got to take this opportunity to, I feel like, try at least one wild card play out. And it's not really looking too good for them as they're getting cut down all over the place and giving so much clearance around the map to Chichester that it's just about 
uh, the cat trapped in the bag rather than getting out of it. Well, I mean, it's very much last chance to loon for them here. And I mean, as, I, as you said, you know, try and throw something out there. Try something new at the start of this season because they are getting absolutely bodied right now. Ratley at 22 and 10. He is more than double positive on a six streak as well. Wayne has already got the streak. Ratley also now has a streak. This is surely cut right here for Aston. I mean, this is insane. They might be able to extend this map, the, though, if they are able to get into this A site. As uh, they have numbers, they just got to be able to find a way to overwhelm. They find the two. Seven coming from the back. That's Ratley with the two. That's Hector Frenzy dropping. Can Ray find the kill? He does. So there's clearance on A. There should be some ticks going in progress for them. That should net them some time. Maybe a minute added to the clock if they can get it. But so far, not still good for the side of Ashton. As the lives differential still maintains... To be a massive six, now starting to slow down and drop down to um, a little bit less. Actually, my math is definitely not good. It was eight, now it's six. And uh, Ray on a streak maybe can earn one to help his team out in securing this next round. I mean, he desperately need it. They desperately need that in this right here. The other team too, and I don't even use yet. So and that is, of course, Wayno and Ratley. You have them at the both putting over 20. I mean, look at this. Knighton's only has six kills. Tau has 13, but it doesn't even matter because Ratley and Wayno both have over 20. Ratley has 25, Wayno has 22. That is absolutely insane. But for the moment, Aston are slowly getting a bit of presence over towards this B site. If they are actually able to get this control point, then they're actually not in a terrible position for the map. But Ratley and Knighton's putting down all of those dreams, all of the combat dreams. You'd love to say it, but again, Tau with another one. Everything is getting shut down. I mean, look at that. To, to kill one of to kill one of Chichester's players, it has to be killed by one of their teammates, not one of Aston's. They, they're just like, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna kill each other just to make it easier for you. We'll, we'll give you a bit of a chance. But Hector has managed to sneak his way onto the point, but it doesn't even matter. Knightens comes through, kills him again. This is absolutely insane. Knightens has picked up another one. Ratley's picked up another one. It's literally it's it's just laughable at this point. They're getting absolutely smacked. Yeah, it's down to a three versus thirteen. It's uh, it's an insurmountable life differential here and with two seconds left this surely is it frenzy last alive on the map last in the lobby for the side of aston as we see chichester win a very very convincing series 3-0 sweep not just in its control but the series as a total and uh by way of knockout really from wayno and ratley the left right hooks uh for the the, the punching fighter that is chichester rangers and uh you gotta think whoever they match up against in that grand finals they're surely gonna be in for in for a bloodbath i mean they're looking like cold war atlanta phase at this point they are looking absolutely unbelievable i mean wayno and ratley in that last map was absolutely it was insane the kills they were able to the amount of engagements they were getting into just ridiculous i mean when it, at the end of the game when their teammate had kills and they both had over 20 I mean, that is the definition of carrying your teammates in a backpack on your back. It was incredible. The hard point as well, I mean, in that map one, I thought it was going to be way closer. Two teams off of the stats that we had, of course. Didn't have many stats for Aston on D and Control. I don't think they're going to want to be looking at the stats that they have after. But in that map, they looked fairly well matched up. They looked pretty good on either side. There was a lot of time picked up by some of the players in it per map. A lot of players on the, of a lot of time picked up by the players per map on Chichester as well. So I thought it was going to be a battle, but it really wasn't. It was a dominant first map, a dominant second, or well, a bit a bit closer in the second map, but still in the end, a dominant last round performance. And in the control, I mean, Aston just didn't even have a chance. It was, it was unbelievable how quickly they shot them down. Like I say, that first round maybe looked like they had a bit of pressure. And if they're able to get that last tick, you never know, could go completely differently. But my goodness, that is one of the most dominant performances I have ever seen especially in the University Corner League. I mean, in the first respawn, we saw a, a very slay powerhouse uh, style come out from the side of Chichester, and there was really not enough match uh, coming in from the Ashton Apes. So when you go into a control, a mode that really favors the team that can slay out and really disintegrate another team's lives, well... That's just what ends up happening. It's a 3-0 sweep. And uh, in the process, I feel like we, we, we have to definitely uh, 
crown ourselves the MVP of this series and 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 Wayno, you know, the resident challengers top tier uh, for that side of Chichester, definitely Sean Bright in the search and destroy and the control, and uh, at times was shadowed by uh, Ratley, but um, I feel like still Sean Brightest. I mean, absolutely. And that search and destroy with that sniper in his hand, he was like John Wick. The shots were absolutely fantastic, especially I remember a quick scope when he got around over towards that A bomb site on M on Bray. It was absolutely fantastic. And I mean, if he's in those line of sights, you've got to be so careful because, like you say, a player of his caliber, I mean, really, if we are realistic, he is a level this level that we have here. But he's a fantastic player. And I mean, if you don't shut him down, you're going to lose maps. It's as simple as that. You've got Ratley there backing him up as well. Like I say, both in that last map, both picking up over 20 kills in those three rounds, which, I mean, for control, isn't an overly massive amount of kills. But considering that it was only three rounds long, that is absolutely just phenomenal. The amount of engagements they were able to pick up with those M4s, they are just absolutely devastating, which, you know, if we see a ban, maybe they might lose a bit of their power, but I don't think they're going to lose all of their power. They just are incredibly good players. They have so much talent. Like I say, in that hard point and that control specifically, it was just, uh, the person didn't have to breathe. Every time they got a break on, there was a four down or a three down at least. Like I said, like I said in the game, it took a teenage in Chichester to even stop the flow of kills. It was... There, there was nothing they could have done. It was ridiculous. Once they lost, the it was all. Well, it, it, it's not just about uh, the slaying. Like I said earlier, the other thing too, you know, to 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 just add to your point on on the M fours and whether they get banned or whatnot is is just their coordination was very on point as well. I feel like it just. All in all, you got a lot of things that combined it together to really prove that they were just the stronger team on the day. And uh, in my opinion, based off of what I've seen so far from even the other teams on the other side of the bracket, I do believe that Chichester should be the uh, the, the team to really take this entire uh, um, opening sort of fall season. Absolutely. I mean, they're certainly looking at the dominant a lot. But yeah, I think... That is going to round up everything we have for this day. An absolutely dominant performance, and that will see Chester through to the upper bracket final. And I think, as we very, very much mentioned, anyone who's going to go and fight them surely should be absolutely terrified of what they have to offer. But my name, I have been the sister. I'm here with Trix, and we have. Thank you so much for watching the stream. I hope you enjoyed it, and we hope to see you on the next one soon. Twitch.tv slash UCODL. Thank you guys for watching. Shout out to England at the World Cup. Shout out.